Good morning, guys. I hope you enjoyed my uh, snow story earlier. <clears throat> so let's carry on with our reading. Feel the fear and do it anyway book. So level three, fear. I can't handle it. That's it. That's the big deal, you may ask. I know you're disappointed and want it something more dramatic than that. But the truth is, at the bottom of every one of your fears is simply the fear that you can't handle whatever life may bring you. Let's test this. The level one fear is translated into, I can't handle illness. I can't handle making a mistake. I can't handle losing my job. I can't handle getting old. I can't handle being alone. I can't handle making a fool out of myself. I can't handle not getting the job. I can't handle losing him or her. I can't handle losing money, etc. Level two fears translate into, I can't handle the responsibility of success. Interesting. I can't handle failure. I can't handle being rejected, etc. Thus, level three, simply, I can't handle it. The truth is, if you know you could handle anything that came your way, would you be, would it, would you possibly have a, have to fear? Nothing. That's the answer. You have nothing to fear. If you probably are not jumping up and down for joy just yet, believe me when I tell you, I have just given you a great piece of news. What I have told just told you means you can handle all your fears without having to control anything in the outside world. This should be a tremendous relief. You no longer have to control what your mate does, what your friends do, what your children do, or what your boss does. You don't have to control what happens in an interview, what happens at your job, what happens in your new career, what happens to your money, <clears throat> or what happens in the stock market. All you have to do to diminish your fear is to develop more trust in your your ability to handle whatever comes your way. So we will handle it. I am belaboring the point because it is so typical. From this moment on, every time you feel afraid, remind yourself this that it is simply because you are not feeling good enough about yourself. Then proceed to use one or more of the tools in this book to build yourself up. You have your task clearly mapped out for you. There is no reason for confusion. I've often been asked to explain why we have so little trust in ourselves. I don't really know the answer to that. I know that some fear is instinctively, instinctively and healthy and it keeps us alert in trouble. The best, the rest, the part that holds us back from personal growth is inappropriate and destructive and perhaps can be blamed on our conditioning. In all my life, I have never heard a mother called out to her child as he or she goes off to school. Take lots of risks today, darling. She's more like the convey to her Be careful, darling. Be, this be careful of it carries with it a double message. The world is really dangerous out there and you won't be able to handle it. What mom is really saying, of course, is if something happens to you, I wouldn't be able to handle it. You see, she is only passing on her lack of trust in her ability to handle what comes her way. I can remember wanting desperately to have a two-wheeled bicycle, but my mother's refusal to buy one. Her answer to my pleas were always the same. I love you too much. I don't want anything to happen to you. I translate this to mean you're not competent enough to handle a two-wheeled bike. Having become older and wiser, I realize now that she was really saying, if anything happens to you, I will fall apart. This overprotective mother of mine was recently in intensive care after surgery with tubes down her, no down her nose and her throat. When I was told it was time for me to leave, I whispered to her, not knowing if she could hear me, that I loved her and I would be back later. As I was walking toward the door, I heard a small, weak voice behind me say, you guessed it, be careful. Even her anesthetic stupor, she was sending me at emotions of doom and gloom. And I know she typifies the great percentage of mothers out there. Concerning how many be carefuls our parents were borrowed with, it's amazing we even managed to walk out the front door. Apart from such seemingly obviously obvious connections, 
the cause of our fear poppy lies elsewhere. But does it really matter where our self-doubts come from? I believe not. It is not my approach to analyze the whys and wherefores of troublesome areas of the mind. It is often impossible to figure out what the actual cause of negative patterns are. And even if we did know, the knowing doesn't necessarily change them. I believe that if something is troubling you, simply start from where you are and take the necessary action to change it. In this case, you know that you don't feel the fact the lack of trust in yourself is stopping you from getting what you want out of life. Knowing this creates a very clear, even laser-like focus on what needs to be changed. You don't have to be, you don't have to scatter your energy wondering why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you begin now to develop your trust in yourself until you reach the point where you will be able to say, whatever happens to me, given any situation, I can handle it. Yes, you can handle it. That's how you do it. I can hear the doubting Thomases saying out there saying, Oh, come on now. How can how to how to handle paralysis or even death of a child or cancer? I understand your skepticism. Remember that I was once a doubting Thomas myself. Just read on and let the book unfold. Give yourself a winning chance by using the tools provided throughout this book. As you do, you will find yourself coming closer and closer to such a high level of self-confidence. Excellent. Anything that comes your way, you can handle anything that comes your way. Never let these three little words out of your mind. Possibly the most important three little words you will ever hear. I can handle it. Can you handle it? Yes, you can. Let's go handle it today. Enjoy your Wednesdays, guys, and have a happy hump day. Have a good one. Bye.